For over 10 years, Grammarly has been powered by AI technology that you can trust. With one click, you and your team can brainstorm, rewrite, and reply with personalized suggestions. Go to Grammarly.com slash business teams to download for free. You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me through the wilderness and woods to where the winds are blowing free through the darkness of the night heading toward the morning. Welcome to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast with the spotlight on section hikers. And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum. We'll round up the truth. And get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods Head over the river And through the woods Welcome back to the Jester Section Hiker Podcast The premier podcast with the spotlight on section hikers And I am your host, Julie Jester Gayhart If you have ever thought about connecting with other like-minded individuals on the trail then this is the episode for you. My co-host, Carissa Hip is back on the show this week to not only give us some updates on what's happening in her role as the Visitor Center Supervisor at the Appalachian Trail Conservancy, but to also share with us about ATC affinity groups, the Wild East Women, and the Umbrella Project. Carissa also agrees to join me for a few more shows as we move into the new year and 2022. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode. And now on to my chat with co-host Carissa Hip. All right, you guys, welcome back to the podcast and welcome back for her third episode as a guest co-host, Carissa Hip. Welcome back, Carissa. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. It's great to be here. Really appreciate you being here, and uh, I think you and I just confirmed we are going to keep going into the new year, so you are going to be with me in 2022 for a few episodes, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, I am too. There are, Carissa and I have had multiple conversations, even before we start recording, um, I, I think we've got six or seven topics pretty much lined up. So, <laughs> yes, never a shortage of things to talk about. No, there is not. But with all of that being said, uh, you guys, we are getting in a pattern of how Carissa's episodes uh, start off, and I love it. Carissa, as you guys have heard, is the visitor center supervisor for the Appalachian Trail Conservancy in Harper's Ferry. So, Carissa, we'll start off this episode like every other one, some updates from the ATC and what's going on. Sure. So, it's a pretty quiet time of year at ATC. We've seen most all of the through hikers that are going to stop by come by for the year. And we still see section hikers come in and a few flip-flop hikers. We do have some flip-flop hikers who begin their hike in the fall, and then they take time off when it gets really cold and then continue their flip-flop through hike in the the next calendar year. So we see some of those people come in occasionally, and we're starting to feel a little bit more of a sense of normalcy. Um, One of our staff members was able to go out and do a school program recently, and then we have a, a very small group come into ATC. So it's exciting to kind of have that happening again and those little first Firsts just kind of mean the world to us right now. Um, I know that is awesome. Face-to-face communication. It is. It's huge. And uh, our staff member went out and spoke to, he, he was working with a physical education teacher at the local middle school. And so he had the entire eighth grade class and then part of the seventh grade class to talk to about his through hike. And he said he wasn't sure if if it was his awesome presentation or if it was the eight teachers standing around them while it was going on. But he said they were a very captive audience and had amazing questions. So it's it's great to hear that there were, you know, no crickets at the end and that the kids were engaged <laughs> and involved. And, and actually he ran out of time 
with questions. So it's great to see that there are youth, um, especially that live, you know, that close to the trail in Harpers Ferry that are engaged and interested in and in possibly getting out on the trail themselves. I love that. And as an educator, I, I do try to incorporate um all my students know what the white blazes are for sure um, <laughs> and how to get on local trails. But I would have loved to have uh, somebody from the ATC. But being down here in Charlotte, North Carolina, I think I'm a little too far away for that. But I can dream, right? Well, we do have some regional offices. And um, actually, the head of our education and outreach um, team is in North Carolina. So you never know. Oh, good to know. Okay, I'll get more information from you about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys may have heard, or we may have alluded to, um, Carissa also has, uh, oh, wait a minute, before I get into that, you had a very special visitor this week at the ATC, because uh, something very, very special is getting ready to happen with two special hikers. So tell us about that. Yes. So um, Dale Sanders, who completed his AT through hike several years ago when he was 82, and um, he was at the time considered the you know oldest hiker to have completed the entire trail in a through hike. Um, he was stopping at the ATC this week as he was heading north to officially kind of hand over the baton to Nimble Will Nomad, who will now become the oldest through hiker at the age of 83. So he was excited, so excited about that. And, you know, he said he didn't think he would necessarily have that record forever, but it was fun while he had it. And he was so excited to um, go up and surprise him for the end of his through hike. That is awesome. And hopefully when Nimble Will gets done, who knows, maybe you'll see him at the ATC. He stopped by for a through hiker photo earlier in the season before I had started my position there. So I missed him, but you never know when he might stop by again. That is awesome. I don't know how you work there, Carissa, because I would be like in all of these hikers coming in, you know, it's just, you know, even though, you know, a lot of us have completed the trail ourselves, or in your case, you are working on it. Um, you know, how do you deal with seeing all these cool hikers all the time? Oh, it's so fun. And um, we had a, a group that stopped by on Friday, a man from Ohio who said he started a nonprofit and brings out veterans on the, the trail for kind of healing expeditions. And they had wanted to go, I think it was to the Grayson Highlands area, but it was so, the temperatures were supposed to be so chilly this weekend. So they decided to come up to Maryland instead. And so they stopped in at ATC and I had chatted with him on the phone, I guess, Thursday, and then got to see him in person on Friday. So it's nice to know that uh, groups like that are getting out on the trail as well. I love it. And you also, last episode, uh, said the ATC was doing some updating aesthetically, I guess, changing some things on the inside. How's that going? Uh, we have a painter hired, so we should have um, some new paint going up uh, throughout the, the downstairs of ATC, which is the, the offices for our staff in the visitor center and then the, the public facing area that the people get to see when they come and visit ATC. And so we'll be taking everything down off the walls for that painting and we're going to redo a little bit of our interpretation, change up the way things are a little bit in the visitor center. And of course, we'll still have, um, you know, our centerpiece is that 10 foot relief map of the Appalachian Trail that so many people are excited to come in and, and see when they're there. Perfect. And I'm sure you're in charge of all that, right? Like it, that's your hub. <laughs> it, that's yeah that's that's my uh my undertaking but we have a facility manager who you know is working with a contractor to do the painting and so I don't know where we'd be without his help because he's amazing we're having a new railing installed out front and just trying to to make some really positive uh, updates for the visitors who come to see us Perfect. Perfect. So I'm actually looking forward to, um, I'll give everybody a hint. If all goes well, uh, you might see me sometime this summer. Yay. So hint, hint on that. And uh, I alluded to earlier, um, before you finished out the question with Nimble Will, that you're also, unbelievable, the co-editor 
of the newsletter or one of the co-editors of the newsletter for the PATC, which is the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club. It never stops with you, Carissa. So tell us a little bit about that gig and what that means and what you're doing. So back, um, you know, when everything was kind of shut down during COVID, I was thinking that I I wanted to get involved with PATC. I finally took the time to kind of look up their website and join and officially become a member. And I was thinking, well, you know, I had uh, pigtails with me pretty much all the time. And I wasn't sure that with a pre-kindergartner at that time that I was going to be able to get out and, you know, do a lot of physical trail work with her by my side. I wasn't sure from a safety standpoint how that worked and and if they allowed that. So when I was on their website, I saw that they were looking for people on their PR committee and their newsletter. They needed help with their newsletter. So I was like, well, that's kind of my background. That's right up my alley. So of course, I uh, couldn't say no and (laughs) got myself into uh, co-editing the newsletter. So every other month I, I do that. And it's the, it's called the Potomac Appalachian. It's a, a really wonderful uh, piece and it varies in size every month, but I know um, the last one I worked on was like 22 pages. So it, it's oh quite goodness. an undertaking. It's a, you know, a large club. They've been around a long time. They're super active and they have a lot of articles that come in and get submitted to us. So there's a lot going on. Well, thank you for doing that. So, okay, so you got a you got a gig here. You're a mom. Uh, <laughs> you're a mom of uh, hiking with pigtails. <laughs> that in of itself. Um, you also have a couple other children. You're the visitor center for the ATC, and now, uh, or the visitor center. You're not the visitor center. You're the visitor center supervisor for the ATC, and now we find out you're the co-editor for the PATC. So you are definitely volunteering, working, and keeping. Bi- oh, and you're also a co-host of this podcast. So <laughs> bravo on, on, on keeping all of that uh, organized. Um, so let's get into the heart of this episode, I guess. Um, we titled this episode Connecting with Others. And after we recorded our last episode, you and I continued our conversation and you brought up several avenues and various groups that people can connect with and let's start with, and I never heard of these before, the affinity groups uh, with the ATC. So go over some of that with us. Sure. So ATC defines an affinity group as a group of people gathered through a shared interest or common goal. And a lot of times they have a component of justice involved in their goal, but they are typically formed around constructs of identity like race, gender, um, class, and it just it's meant to provide individuals with minority identities the opportunity to gather in a shared space where they can feel comfortable. And so um, I'll I'll tie in PATC again, because yesterday uh, PATC had its first ever women's hiking summit. And so, you know, we had these, this group of women together and we had all kinds of wonderful workshops throughout the day. And it was a a smallish group just because of COVID. We kept the size small. Um, And we were mostly outside in a pavilion for a lot of it, but we shared information on topics from Leave No Trace to uh, Winter Hiking to Backpacking 101. And so, you know, we had all these women together and Backpacking 101. And of course, you know, these questions come up and I'm thinking these are questions that women probably would not be as comfortable asking in a, you know, male and female environment, but they're like, you know, how, how do you stick to leave no trace principles and pack out feminine hygiene products? You know, what, what's the process with that? Um, how do you do that and do it correctly when you're in the outdoors? And so, you know, it's great that they, they want that knowledge and they're hungry for it, but you know, you could tell the person who asked the question was a little bit hesitant about it. And then I heard some other people around me say, oh, I'm so glad she asked that. I was wondering too. So this whole idea with affinity groups is that, you know, people feel most comfortable with with their, their like-minded, um, you know, like gendered individuals. And so they're trying something new if they're getting out in the outdoors for the first time and they're hesitant. 
then then maybe they feel most comfortable in that kind of a situation. And so one of the affinity groups with ATC that has taken off the most probably is the Wild East Women. And so that's to get women out in the outdoors more, but also um, there are a lot of people involved with Wild East Women who are on trail crews and who get out there and they lead trail crews and they lead chainsaw certification and they get out there with the guys um, and you know, aren't afraid and, and know how to use all those tools and to build trails and to build rock steps. And, you know, they know their stuff. They're pretty sharp. <laughs> that's cool. As soon as you said chainsaws, I, I like rose up in my chair and perked up. Like, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. So I'm assuming this information is on the ATC website, which I will 100% make sure it that, is. Um, yeah. that information is in the show notes and the information about the affinity groups is in the show notes. Um, is there any other of the affinity groups that you wanted to mention? So we recently, um, we have it on our, our website where people can write to us if, if none of the affinity groups that kind of speak to them are linked on the page, they can actually email us at ATC and we can send them a list. So there, there are so many different groups. There are um, veterans groups. There are vegetarian groups. Oh, wow. um, and, and so... I guess group maybe isn't the right terminology because I think that was the idea uh, initially with ATC is that all of these kind of topics would, there would be groups that would form around them. And so it just kind of depends on, you know, the time and ability of the people who are involved with that to kind of get it going. And so that's why Wild East Women really took off as a group, but the others kind of exist more as lists so if somebody, um, say, like I mentioned, vegetarian, so if somebody is a vegetarian is, and is concerned about how they're going to get enough nutrients while they're hiking the, through hiking the AT, they can send us an email and we can recommend people to them who have checked off on their 2000 miler stats that they are happy to be contacted about, you know, how they were able to through hike as a vegetarian and what worked for them. So that's just one example, but there are, you know, that is very true because I just, yes, there are. And I wanted to mention and thank the ATC because a recent guest I had on Bill Blake, um, he hikes and um, has type one diabetes. Yes. And he reached out to the ATC and the ATC did just what you mentioned, sent him a list of through hikers that completed um, that were diabetics So that is definitely connecting with others. And I was amazed um, that he even thought to do that. Um, So I encourage people listening to this episode. um, If you are hiking and you want more information on stuff, do reach out. Yeah, definitely. Because, um, you know, there are so many topics that we have on our website, but we obviously don't cover everything. I mean, there's some minutia in there. Um, I think there's even an affinity list for people who attended mass while through hiking the trail. And so, um, you know, you might not find that anywhere else online, but you can write to us and we can send you a list of people who said, yes, I did this during my through hike and I'm willing to share information on how I did it with others. And so sometimes, you know, other people are our best resources in those kinds of situations. And I know you mentioned to me that you would like to see a hiking and healing um, affinity group. Sure. So, um, you know, we have we have a veterans group and a lot of those are people who are healing from PTSD. Um, And so I feel like there could even be kind of a larger um, and I, I use the term umbrella, which I guess would lead us into the next part of the conversation. I, I feel like there could be this larger umbrella group of hiking and healing because um, there are also other organizations out there and groups that exist. Um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the man who was leading the group of veterans on the trail who are doing some healing um, while they're out there. And so um, grief is, you know, another topic that a lot of people who are on the trail say they are are using that time on trail to heal from. And one of the volunteers um, that are at the visitor center for ATC, she is involved with a fairly new group called the Umbrella Project. 
And it's geared towards young adults um, in the ages of 18 to 25 who have recently lost a parent, a caregiver, or a sibling. And so they have some qualified counselors who go out with them on these backpacking trips. And they had their kind of first official one back in October. But it does state on their website at umbrellaprojecthike.org that the actual time with the counselors is not necessarily intended to provide therapy. I think it kind of facilitates healing, but um, it says on their site that the experience itself, just overcoming the obstacles and backpacking and becoming self-reliant and trusting yourself and your peers is what really helps facilitate the healing and personal growth that they want to provide to people. And I think, I mean, just hearing the affinity groups you know, hiking and healing as a category, I think that's an excellent idea uh, because as the listeners know, um, not only was Bill able to reach out to the ATC, but most recently um, Austin, my other co-host, has shared, you know, about his post-traumatic stress and just being able, and he shared one of his stories of how he went out hiking with other individuals uh, that were suffering pro- from post-traumatic stress helped him out greatly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think it's very valuable and important um, to get this information out there. And you and I spoke <laughs> right before we started recording how this episode is going to come out in the heart of the holidays. Um, and quite honestly and truthful, the holidays could be very stressful. They can be. They're stressful for many people. And for, you know, for many people, it's a time of joy, but for others, it's not. Um, It's a really challenging and difficult and sometimes painful time. And so I feel like if people, you know, kind of pencil in that time to allow themselves to get outside, even if they feel like they're too busy or they don't have time, you know, sometimes it's just 20 minutes. I think that's what the, you know, the research shows is that 20 minutes a day in nature can impact our health in such a positive way. And so, you know, if you take that time to get outside and you don't have to go on a hike, you don't have to put in a whole bunch of miles, but find a spot, whether it's in your backyard or at a local park or a favorite trail and, you know, just find a spot that, that speaks to you. For me, it's, it's by the water. I love the water. I think it's really calming. And, you know, as long as I can't hear traffic and I'm by the water and there's a tree and some moss, I'm a happy girl. (laughs) Um, But, but take that time and, and get out there and really tune into your five senses And if, you know, if you're having trouble slowing down your mind, definitely, you know, silence your phone and all the notifications, but, you know, take a journal with you and, and literally just, you know, jot down, you know, see, hear, smell, feel, taste, and try to write something and and pencil in those categories so that you can have your mind kind of be in that moment and kind of direct where your, your mind is going. And so, you know, I think that's just a great way to to connect with nature and, and slow everything down and reap those health benefits. And I know this time of year as well, um, it's kind of like a limbo land for hikers. And what I mean by that is, and, and I go through this myself, is, um, you know, the end of October, November, December, you get through the holidays. And then January, that's kind of that limbo land in between what I call hiker season. Mm -hmm. And these are the months that, you know, one of the things that I try to do, you know, to get through the holidays and all the stress that comes with that um, is plan future things and research and, you know, maybe take on a volunteer component of what I want to do. Not too much, because you and I have talked about that as well. You don't, you want to volunteer, but don't (laughs) over volunteer. That's a whole other topic. Yes. So, you know, in between... I don't know, in between your section hikes. And we also talked about, you know, maybe having an episode of specific things you can do in between those longer section hikes. Mm -hmm. And I just think this is valuable information specifically um, for this time of year. Mm -hmm. And I will make sure that everything you talked about is in the show notes. And I do encourage people to reach out to us. Um, I'll make sure Carissa's emails in the show notes, my emails in the show notes. 
for topic ideas or questions, or maybe you want to get involved in a group that you don't know exists. And I know, Carissa, you would be more than uh, willing to answer questions on that as well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's no reason I, I would hate for someone to ever say, well, I'm, I'd love to know more about hiking or get into hiking more, but I just don't have anybody to go out with. And so I, I think that with a, you know, it might take a little more digging depending on where you are or, you know, who it is that you feel most comfortable with. But I think there are lots of other like-minded people out there. It, it just might take a little searching, but you know, you should, you should get out on the trail. You're going to be happy that you did. I know we're both smiling. Yes. So uh, that, that that's a very good thing. So to end this episode, I know you have something you want to say and something you want to read to us. So um, close us out with some final thoughts. And uh, I look forward to hearing that what you're going to read because I haven't heard it yet. Sure. So this goes along with, um, you know, a nature meditation that you could do when you're outside. And, you know, as a forest bathing guide, you have someone to kind of guide you through connecting with your five senses. But like I suggested, take a take a journal out and just jot the things that you're you're noticing around you, the things that you can see, hear, smell, feel and, and taste when you're outside. And then I love, this is part of a, an ending to a nature meditation by Ben Page, who is a guide, a forest bathing guide with the Association of Forest and Nature Therapy. And this comes from his book called Healing Trees, A Pocket Guide to Forest Bathing. And he says, as your imaginal sense awakens, what does your heart begin to notice in this place? What remains hidden beneath the surface of your sensory perception? What is speaking directly to you? What is speaking through you, your body and the world? Gaze with your heart. Can you sense the inner beauty of this moment? I love that. Can you sense the inner beauty of this moment? Thanks again, Carissa. You and I will be back after the first of the year. Uh, for some more episodes. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm pretty sure I said this the last time Carissa and I recorded at the end of our episode, but I have to say it again. I always feel so calm and balanced after our chats. I hope you all feel the same way. As we make our way through the hustle and bustle of the holiday season, I hope you take some time to step away calm your mind, and enjoy the outdoors. As always, you can go to hikingradionetwork.com and click on the Jester Section Hiker Show to find all of today's show notes, pictures, and links mentioned in this episode. If you find value in what we do here at the network, please consider leaving us a donation by clicking on any one of the donate buttons found on our website and let us know why you enjoy our shows. Thanks for listening, everybody. Be safe out there and happy section hiking. I'm wondering if you'd go wandering with me Through the wilderness and woods To where the winds are blowing free Through the darkness of the night Heading toward the morning light I wonder if you'd wander with me And I'll spread the word We'll round up the troops and get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets and these neighborhoods Head over the river and through the woods You're wondering if I go wandering with you What kind of trouble We'll get ourselves into Would it be wrong to tag along With a band of vagabonds You wonder if I'd wander with you So I'll spread the word And you beat the drum We'll round up the troops And get the gang to come And we'll leave the streets And these neighborhoods through the woods
I'm wondering if you'd come wandering my way If you ever get lost or if the trail leads you astray The music of the pack can always bring you back I wonder, can we wander away? And I'll spread the word and you beat the drum up the troops and get the gang to come and we'll leave the streets in these neighborhoods head over the river and through the woods looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season Test your skills on prize picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com/get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.